If you're from Australia, India, Japan or United States, then continue watching this video because in this video, we are going to talk about the Quad Fellowship. It's one of a kind fellowship which was launched in September 2021 and it will have 25 seats available for all these four countries. So in totality, there are 100 seats available. The best thing about this is not many people know about this fellowship because it was just launched last year and the chances of getting this would be higher. So what are the details? If you're eligible for it, I would highly recommend you to go for it. The deadline is 30th June for this year. So definitely do apply for it if you're eligible for it. Let's directly jump into it. First of all, let's talk about the coverage. Now, if you're planning to go to United States and start your education in August 2023 and till somewhere between May 2024, now you're eligible for this. So if you're planning to go to United States for your education in 2023, you're eligible for it. Now, what is the amount that you get? You get $50,000 as a one-time payment. So your account would be credited with $50,000, which you can, which is approximately 40 lakh rupees, which you can use for anything. Now that can be your tuition expenses. That can can be your books, expenses on your lodging, any expense that would be a one time payment of $50,000, which you can use for anything. This is the list of the things that you can use it for. But you have to go for a STEM course. Now we have already talked on this channel what a STEM course is. For those of you who do not know, STEM course is a science, technology, engineering, mathematics related course. And going to United States for a STEM course makes sense. Going to United States for a non-STEM course ideally does not make sense because you do not get the CPT and the OPT. We have already talked about that. Uh, the post-study work visa gets a bit difficult. Getting a sponsor in the United States gets a bit difficult. So ideally, if you're planning to go to United States, check whether the course that you're going for is a STEM course or a non-STEM course we've already made a few videos you can check it on our youtube channel but here if it is a stem course it can be a finance related stem course it can be a commerce related stem course it can be a stem course related to anything but make sure it is a science technology engineering mathematics related course and if it is a stem course you're eligible for it let's talk about the eligibility criteria so the first eligibility criteria is that you have demonstrated research papers in stem related things science technology engineering mathematics uh, research papers or your academics are very strong in STEM field. Second one is passion for the intersection of science, society and policy. The second eligibility criteria is that students should not only demonstrate their interest in science but the science that they're interested in should actually help in public policy or the society. Now, how could a student show that? You can show that by research papers, which can have an impact on the society. Or you can talk about an internship that you did, which can have an impact on the society. Third one is capacity to bridge differences. Now, let's suppose there is a person from a different economic strata or a different social strata. You should have the experience and you should actually demonstrate that you can actually sustain with people from different stratas, be it economic or social stratas. Orientation towards results. Candidates should also describe their track record and abilities to produce tangible, successful and positive results. Now here you actually have to show tangible results that I was coming from this college and I did this. This is how I actually improved myself and this is my tangible results that I have actually done so good throughout my career, be it my class 10, 12th, first year college, second year college, third year college, and then the internship, I also received the gold medal. So here you actually boast about all the uh, accomplishments that you have had. Fifth and sixth point are fairly simple. So fifth point is that the student should be graduated, be that of completed with his undergraduate degree or his or her undergraduate degree or a master's degree. And the sixth point is that they must be pursuing or should go to pursue a degree in the United States. Now let's talk about the documents required for the Quad Fellowship. The first one is a statement of purpose. Why you should be getting the Quad Fellowship, how you can make an impact on the society and how it will help you achieve your professional aspirations. You have to talk about all these things in your statement of purpose. The second thing are the official transcripts and they must all be in English. Third one is that you have to write two short essays. The first essay has to be about leading positive change and the second essay has to be about sharing and bridging diverse perspectives. The fourth one is a resume and how to make a resume. We have already made a video on that on this channel. 
Now the resume should not be more than two pages. This is what the official website also states. But ideally, I would try to keep that resume in one page. The fifth one is at least three letter of recommendations. And out of those three letter of recommendations, two should actually be coming from your professors who have directly taught you. And the third one can also come from your professor or someone you have been working under or you have been directly mentored by. Sixth is that you have to submit your TOEFL score. And seventh, you can submit any other scores that you have. Let's suppose you have given your GREs, you can submit that score as well. You have given your GMAT, you can submit that score as well. Apart from that, there are some other documents that you also require. You require your 10th mark sheets, you would also require your 12th mark sheets and your graduation mark sheets. You would also require certificates from the university that you've graduated from or a degree from the university you have graduated from. Apart from that, we would also require passport size scanned photos of yours. We would also require proof of your income that can be ITR, address and identity. So that can be any official document that you have. And finally, we would also require a passbook or that can be a check in which the amount you would need the amount to be credited. So these are the details of the fellowship. Now, how do you apply for it? Many people end up asking me, Murad, you're not telling us the application process. I'm actually telling you the application process in every video, a video in which I'm not telling you the application process. Everything is in the details. So anyway, let's get started with the application process. So the application process goes like this. Open the official website that I have already left in the description here. Click on apply link. Now on this page, click on start your application option. Now, if you have already registered on the portal, click on login. Otherwise make an account, enter your email address, first name, last name, and click on the continue option. Now enter further details in the application form and click on submit option. Once you're done with it. After successful registration, log in with the details. Now enter your details in the application form, upload relevant documents, click on submit option and your application would be submitted successfully. The application process of all these certificates, all these fellowships and all these scholarships are actually very simple. It's just that you have to follow whatever it asks you to do. Just don't directly jump. And we uh, as students have an habit, uh, whatever information there is given, we tend to skip it. Okay. 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 Click next, click next and click next. And we try to do that for everything. Do one thing for these scholarships, try to take out 10 minutes of your time. Trust me, 10 minutes is one hour is just 4% of your day. 10 minutes is less than 1% of your day. So just take out 10 minutes of your day and read through what they're asking you to do. Just don't blindly click on next, 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 next. That's not going to help you in any way. Anyhow, if this was helpful to you, I know many people have been asking me for scholarships for undergraduate students. I'm planning to come out with many. I'm actually making a full list. Just the thing is right now I'm not posting them because their deadlines are way, way, way ahead in the future. So I do not want to waste your time because I'm pretty sure most of the people end up watching my videos within one month of it being posted. So I do not want to waste your time. Whenever those scholarships are in the near future, I'll start posting them as well. Thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to do hit the bell icon.